Kia ora, Dean. Kia ora. Welcome to the Dunedin Stories podcast. Very, very good to be here. Well, I'm really pleased to have you here. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit nervous about interviewing such a radio personality and a suave and sophisticated um, interviewer, if you like. So we'll just put that out then. Well, yeah, um, I don't think you need to be. <laughs> I think within a few minutes you're going to go, oh. I've oh, met Mackie here. <laughs> yeah, we well, this is going Damn. All good. Well, look, from the start, let's um, open it up for the Dunedin Stories community. Who are you and uh, what do you do, perhaps? Sure. I'm I'm Dan Murphy, born Daniel, spent most of my childhood up until about 20 as Danny. I was a Danny. Danny, the Danny Murphy. Cute. Danny boy. And then you were six foot four. And... Yeah, well, no, like, so I'm six foot eight now. Yeah, I stopped growing just before I turned 15. Wow. So being 15 at Kavanagh College as it was, um, coming into fifth form when, when everyone else is five foot eight or, <laughs> or, or significantly shorter, um, and I was quite a, a big boy that way then too. It wasn't awkward at all, you know? So they were mistaken for one of the teachers. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> up to too much though, good. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Still a baby face. But yes, so that's me. I'm Dan. I born and bred in Dunedin. Uh, I work these days for the great team at Mortgage Link Otago, uh, and I'm in the insurance seat, or one of them with uh, with Insurance Link. And I love it. It's great. I work with people every day, uh, looking after their insurance. So we do the people stuff. A lot of people don't get that insurance is split into two teams. You've got insurance for stuff. And insurance for people, so life and health and that sort of stuff. If you, you know, if you've had your house broken into, I wouldn't say I don't care, but I can't help you. No, understand. So, has it always been in your blood, insurance? You've had a new one. Quite an eclectic range of careers over your years, haven't you? I have. I've done a few things. Yeah. Yeah, I've done a few things. I trained as a teacher at uh, Dunedin College of Education just before the merge with university. So there was two at that stage. You could go to the university, you could go to the college. Um, and I was at T-Cole mainly because, wow, I knew I worked kind of well with kids and I had no idea what to do and everyone else was being a student. So let's go be a student. Um, uh, yeah, so trained as a teacher, never actually taught at a school because by that stage I'd kind of realised I didn't really want to do that. But I did do a bit of teaching for a while at Cargill Enterprises down on Cargill's Corner. Uh, and I was the education officer, I think I was called, uh, mainly literacy and numeracy for the for the clients there, as we called them at the time. Quite a different place as to what it is now. Um, when I was there, and I'm sure it still is, I just haven't had anything to do with it, but when I was there, it was an amazing place for those people, just a massive community Um of people with disabilities who got to hang out and spend their days with lots of other people with disability. And do some earning at the same time. Do some earning, do a lot of learning. Um, and so I was yeah, mainly reading and writing, but did everything from taking people through their forklift license. Can't drive a forklift. Save myself, but I can take them through a computer program. Um, swinging a hammer, putting stuff on an envelope, all of that stuff. So that was really great. I uh, did that for nearly two years. Then what? Uh, I worked as a, as a, what do you call it? A security officer, a doorman, a bouncer? You're an bouncer. Oh, uh, I did for allied security uh, at a whole lot of places, but the wool shed primarily. A lot of people have fond memories of the wool shed. Yeah. These are or not so fond, perhaps, but. Ken's got time of the night. We went home. <laughs> Here's the end, isn't that? <laughs> Nothing good happens after midnight. I do know and remember well that at nine o'clock, um, Des will give us the look and that's when you got the cage from the back room and put it up on the pool table so everyone could have a dance. Yeah, that one hasn't been replicated. So <laughs> um, there was a lot of fun and a really great place to work, not just the Wolfshire, but Allied Security. Again, a really good kind of community of people. And then somewhere in there got the radio bug. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did that happen? My uncle worked for 93 Rocks. He was the sales manager. And lived with us because he had moved from Invercargill. So 1994, when 93 Rocks was the thing, the station, and we were all calling out the eights, man. You were. Um, they were putting in dedications. 
Were you? hundred percent. I want a pair of sunglasses from 93 Rocks in the first couple of weeks. Yeah. So I guess I got the bug then, but it wasn't until I kind of went through my teaching thing and came out the other end of it that I thought this is what I want to do. So I went to Haraki Polytech, um, the radio. It was TTR for a while, which is television, theatre and radio, but I came in just as it was becoming just a radio course. Um, and it was great. Just, it was, had kind of struggled a bit with the teacher's college education kind of... Um, In a box. Like a traditional tertiary education, to be honest. Um, but not this. This was practical and fun and straight A's all the way and heaps of fun. Um, there was a radio station that the main tutor, Grant Millman, owned um, up in Kingwood uh, College um, called Inferno. And when we say radio station, it was a room. It had a transmitter and a computer. It ran, the software we ran was Winamp. So it was just a very basic playlist. Um, and it played rock and punk. And I couldn't believe it. They'd let me do the breakfast show. I was getting paid, of course. I was like, what? Okay. And we did it. I became Massive Dan. Um, and that's where that little uh, uh, name was born. And we were the morning Massive because my uh, co-host, Brendan, was, wasn't small either. Um, and just had a great deal of fun for about a year doing that free. And then in the end, I'd bought that station off Grant Melman, I think for like four and a half thousand dollars, or strictly speaking, my dad bought it off him. <laughs> I ended up paying dad back. I mean, we made enough to pay the rent and have a lot of fun. Wow. And then went off to Balclutha, met my now wife, Shelley, at uh, radio school and about Five or six months after we met, we were living and working in sunny Belclutha, running a radio station by ourselves, Big River Radio, and we had to do everything, and it was great. And I guess to make that story a little bit shorter, um, really great to be working with communities and being a real pivotal part of a community. Went from there to Masterton, did that there, um, was their afternoon show host and promos guy for about eight months before I got a job in Central Otago. Stayed there for four and a half years uh, and then left, came back to Dunedin. And that was a government job for the Ministry for Culture and Heritage, Culture and Heritage uh, where, do you remember we all went digital for TV? Going Digital was the campaign and I worked for it as the community advisor. We were set up in a caravan outside the warehouse and the countdown and talking at Provost Clubs and uh, citizens advice and you name it it was um, it was our longest information it was a three and a half year information campaign and I would be talking to senior citizens groups going don't forget that your TV is going to change in three years it's a very long time <laughs> it was tale. a long tale but it was really good because it was a huge change for people and then after that because that finished obviously I thought I'll go back to radio but I got into sales and have been here well Almost ever since, finished it a couple of years ago, and now we're back to the present day. Yeah, yeah. So a very quick version of it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there must have been a DJ stint in there at some point. You must have been a, a, a disc jockey, uh, spinning. Oh, do you mean like at pubs and stuff? There was, there was once or twice at the wall sheet. I convinced them that I could. It wasn't good. We did a New Year's, I think. That was after D's left, um, and I had I had burned a whole lot of. CDJ. Not illegal. Um, burned a whole lot of tracks from, I think, Windows Media Player to CDs, ready with the playlist written up, ready to go, and then didn't realise till I got there that they don't work. <laughs> if you do that, because it's that kind of file type, ready to go, I realised, oh, good, 90% of my songs don't work. This is going to be, and this is well before Spotify or anything like that that would have saved my life. So that was embarrassing. So you just a lot of chat and come along yeah. and go through the night. The grease remix. That is simply not there. I hundred percent. I do Well, look, I think obviously your career pathway has helped you shape an empathy for people, isn't it? You've worked with all shapes and sizes throughout that time and had a lot of different roles, which brings your strength to working with people and insurance, isn't it? Yeah, I guess the common thread through all of those is I do have a bit of a talent for being able to take in a message, sometimes quite complicated and sometimes quite delicate, especially some of the stuff we dealt with on the radio. And because I was on air, I did miss it, but I got to go back on air for Radio Dunedin um, 
quite recently for the last uh, couple of years. So I was on here during COVID and getting those messages out. But I guess the common thread is taking in some fairly complicated stuff and being able to package it up and deliver it to people in a way they can easily understand. And that worked well for me through even the radio sales and media sales stuff, because that can be quite complicated and hard to understand. Um, and definitely with insurance, because that's a complicated beast in itself. And it's actually quite simple. If you've had it explained to you, you know? Yeah. But a lot of the new house. A lot of it must be about trust and sharing what would be pretty sensitive information about you as a person as well. Yes. And I do have a lot of sensitive conversations with people because you do find out about, uh, you know, their, their detailed health history and also their debt and that sort of stuff. Um, but it is, it's, it's a respect thing. You can give respect without a grand gesture. You can give respect with a look and just things you say and the things that you don't say. Yeah. Um, and there is, and I say this to my kids quite a lot, there is a lot to be said being able to read a room. And act accordingly. And, and all of those things work for that. But yeah, I like to think that, especially with the insurance stuff, the, 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 there's no there's no news or information that's going to make it or should make me go, ooh, <laughs> you know, I act inappropriately. Yeah, yeah. And insurance as a career pathway is one thing, but, you know, insurance as an industry must have seen some rapid change in the in the past. Well, it has, and like I say, I'm quite new to it, but I've, you know, haven't been in for a couple of years now. You you talk to the old guard, you, you find out a lot of stories, and I guess the biggest change that's gone through, and financial services as a whole, um, is regulation. And I've come in, as I was studying, uh, I've studied the new way to do things, which I think is an advantage, because, I, you know, this is, this is the way forward. There's no conversion for me to do. But it is now heavily regulated, um, as far as what you can offer people, the advice that you give and how that's documented and how you can prove that you are, you know, doing things that are in the best interest of the client as opposed to the best interest of yourself because there's a lot of uh, people who have blazed a trail in the past that isn't, you know, quite so nice. I guess a good example of what has happened in the past is, and probably the most common, is people are just changing policies. Without going right into it, as an advisor, you generally get paid a certain amount when someone comes to you new as a client, and then you get paid a smaller amount every year as they renew. And what a lot of people used to do is every year, instead of getting a little bit, I'd say, hey, Bex, you know that insurance I sold you? That's great and all, but what about this? And do that every year so that I get paid a big chunk right? Uh, every year. And you just can't do that. No. For a lot of reasons, because in that 12 months, something might have happened to you medically that would mean the new insurance doesn't cover you for what you might be covered for and you can figure out what goes on from there. But, um, so there's, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's better to, it's not only better to help people and do the right thing, because if you do, do go down that road where you're not doing that, that road's going to fall apart eventually and no one wants to live like that. Um, but it, it is nice knowing that people are, there's legislation in place to make sure that people are safe. Protected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you think um, being in Dunedin has some positive impact in you growing this new industry business for yourself? Do you think there's something special about Dunedin with that in mind? I think Dunedin's great, which I know, to be honest. Um, and yes, it is a great place to be for that. We're in a bit of a sweet spot. Because a lot of the work I do, because I'm with Mortgage Link, is in relation to um, the housing market because for the most part, I get my business from people who've just got a mortgage through one of the brokers and then they'll refer to me because when you take on more debt, then you should make sure your insurance keeps up. Um, we've just come through an incredible burst of first home buyers um, for the, the biggest for a long time. And that might change with, government legislation that's made it a little bit easier for investors to come back in. There'll be probably a switch there. Um, but in general, we're in a sweet spot in that the everyone wants to earn more money, of course, but essentially the average house price is on a, not so much on a par with the wage, 
But if you look at places like Queenstown, where you're in a, a place that has, I don't know, the current population, but it's in the low tens of thousands, and then the highest... Three um, million, I think. Yeah, you know crazy average house price. Um, there's just such a disconnect there that you can just struggle to ever get there. Um, whereas here, where it's just a much more, a little bit, you know, a little bit more even down. Um, so it makes it easier to do business. Um, and also when you are somewhere like Queenstown and you're buying a $2 million house, that's the average, maybe a $2.5 million house, all the time you, you know, I'm happy to help you with it. And if you know anyone, <laughs> but insuring for that amount, like the prices of everything get up there because the value is there. And sure, you might have some equity eventually, but it's, it's tough stuff. But to Dunedin in general, yeah, approachable people, a lot of families and yeah, good place to be. Yeah, and you've got a very strong network, of course, as well, because you've been here for a considerably long time. It's fun to know people, and especially through MediaWorks, because I was there with advertising uh, for seven and a half years or so, so met a lot of really great uh, business owners and managers and marketing managers and that sort of thing, and have been with uh, BNI for a long time, so I've got a really good business network uh, through that. Shout out to uh, BNI. Uh, shout out to BNI. Um, Currently with the uh, the Meeting City chapter, looking for a few different people, so feel free to just pop by. What's some extra me? Come, come and have a wee visit up at the uh, Mornington Tap House on a Thursday. Anyway, um, yeah, so a decent network and that definitely helps mm. uh, in general. What about a sort of um, specific people or other organisations? We've done a BNI shout out, no doubt we'll do a Michael for Mortgage Link shout out and Meeting out. Works, but. When you're growing a business like you are, are you familiar with any people or organisations that really step up and help you out with that stuff? Is there any heroes you'd like to mention? Uh, yeah, I mean, Business South is always good. Uh, but in general, to be honest, I don't know, it's easier said than done. It's much easier when you are from here and you have people, but you need to go out and make your own network. You meet people every day, and if you don't catch up with them and actually make them be your friends... It's not that hard to be <laughs> But you know what I mean. It's, it's it's all very well. You might have the biggest network ever, but if you never see them or take any opportunities to grow that, not grow it necessarily in size, but in substance, then you, you might as well not have it. So, yeah, there's there's plenty of plenty of good organisations and groups and, and people in general uh, that have helped me over the years, but it is mainly about getting out there and, doing it yourself. Mm. And I suspect a large amount will also be referrals from people that have felt that you've done a great job for them and they've trusted you. Yeah. So I, I know for us that, um, you know, when we have something, a good experience with somebody, if we know somebody's looking for something similar, we'll tap them and say, hey, you need to go and see Dan Murphy. Yeah. You can, can take, take care of him. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of it is to do with not just doing a good job until the sale but keep doing a good job after that. And that is challenging. There's no doubt about that because there's a lot. Um, and especially because people don't really understand it, the really most simple request, oh, I need to change that or this or that. Um, it's fine. It's not that hard, but it, it, it takes a bit. You get a lot of those, you've got to keep on top of them, but that's just managing your business. Mm. Um, Is there anything around industry innovation that you'd like to share with the community? So... I'm thinking, you know, AI is an acronym or a term that's on everybody's mind, or should be. Uh, what, anything you want to share with us that's going on in the insurance industry around there? No. <laughs> Not a fit concept. I mean, in general, yes. But in a way, so you can go on to chat GPT, and I use it myself in the business all the time. Um, so it's not really something that's kind of out there for people who use as much, whereas I'm constantly delving through policy documents to see, you know, this trauma policy covers you for this condition in this way and then this condition in this way. And I've now figured out that I can upload a whole lot of policy documents into an AI chat and say, great, which one's best? Or which one covers this? And it's really, really good at coming out. Um, AI will definitely make its place in the in insurance industry. I know that on the other side of it, the stuff sites, the fire in general, there are programs that you can use your um, 
your Google Home or your, um, what, do, what do we call it, Alexa, uh, to just say, hey, Alexa, what's, you know, give me some insurance. And you can get it, book it, pay for it, all there. Um, and you can get good advice through the people side on that kind of service as well, but it's still not actual advice. Mm. It's still really important because yeah, it is it's, 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 it's the ethics side of it as well, isn't it? Because you can, you're can you using a system that's been programmed by somebody or a group of people that have a particular lens and having it artificially yeah. make a decision yeah. based on that, um, the equitable side of that is so questionable. Hmm. The thing is with a person, you can go, but why? But why? Tell me more. I'm not happy. But why? And you should. Mm. Yeah. Always. Where does he get that from? Yeah. Um, because there's a lot at stake. People get really caught up and when they're going through something like this, because it can be something that you would go through getting insurance. There's a lot of old, lots of questions. And when you get fatigue, and I'm definitely that person that goes, right, I'm done now. Take me to the next thing. When you get fatigue, you get caught up in the fact that all I'm doing is selecting something, finding a price and going, is that thing better than that thing? And I'll get it. What you're actually dealing with is the day you find out you've got cancer, how much money are you going to have? And is it going to be enough to provide for your family? And it's it's kind of hard to bring people to that space in that moment. And in a way, without sounding like you're a bit of a fearmonger, you know, you're a bit of a salesman. The fact is, it's, you know, I deal with people on both sides, the sales sides and the claim side. Um, literally, before I walked in the door today, the first call I make after this, as a lady got in touch, so her husband's had a stroke, what have we got in place? Um, and I know it's good insurance we've got in place, but it's that that you've got to keep the line as well. Mm, set people stuff. Mm. Oh, it is. It's all about people. We in it there. Yeah. Agree. Shall we change it up and talk yeah. about Octoposhi Dunedin and, and just how fantastic she is and why we love her? Mm. Uh, you know, the usual questions that I've been asking people. If you had a visitor come to Dunedin to hang out with you for a day, where are you taking them for lunch, Dan? Where am I going for lunch? I tell you where I like, and the food is great, but it's not necessarily just for the food. But uh, Emerson's on a Sunday to a great, uh, quite often was a decent band there. Sunday sish. Good vibe. Shoestring fries on the Barlina and yeah, awesome. yeah that Emerson's is a good time. But there's loads of, loads of good places. I know, it's hard to pick and bait it, isn't it? What about, okay, it's Shelley's birthday today. Happy birthday, Shelley. This might get published today, but she can have a longer lasting birthday. Sure. Let's say you're taking her out for dinner tonight then. Right, let's say we are. Oh, um, some good spots. Because this is fictitious, um, I could say like backers. You can say to Dorgan. You have to pay the, for the $400 steak. Um, no, we have been there once. Um, beautiful, beautiful place. And uh, But if we're going out tonight, I do like vault because I like myself a, a, a good fancy wonton. Um, also, we went to Biggie's not long ago, the new one in uh, Green Island. Yeah. Yeah, so no, there's there's many places to go. We let's, found out let's it's say, the biggies. Absolutely, he's doing great. Thanks, that guy. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Really, really is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, what about a secret spot? So you want to get away from it all. You want to be alone with your thoughts. And there's a bit where you go up Drivers Road. You know where I am. So you're off the main street. You're going up Drivers Road from around that Albany um, Street intersection and you hang a left, you end up near the St. Hilda, I think it is at the St. Hilda's Hostel. Okay. Not going down that road. But there's a, there's a park bench sitting on uh, the side of a hill that has the most incredible view of the city. And I used to go there when I was um, stressing out, studying for seventh form English, really. <laughs> So that's my spot. So you can you can head up there and have a wee look. So you go up Drivers Road, um, hang a left. I can't remember the name of the street. That's all right. We will hang a left off there and you, it's, you can't miss it. Park bench right on the side. Haven't been there in 15 years. Probably oh, gone. It's probably in a park with concrete sitting there. Well, the might just work. Yeah. Other than that, can't go past John Willie. Yeah. Fair or, enough. For a Macca's lunch where no one will see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone will see you then. Every day there's people lined up there, isn't there? That's right. You it's should... like a line of confessionals. You're so meeting with McDonald's. 
But Dan, you're a family man. You've got two wonderful young boys. I don't. Is there, thinking of families in general, was there an event in the calendar that you, every year without a doubt, unless there's the COVID happening, mm-hmm. do, that you make sure is in the calendar for you and the boys and Shelley? We always go to Brighton Gala Day here. In I thought it mentions that one. Good. Yeah. Fantastic event, isn't it? Well, we used to live in Brighton. We were there for quite a while before we bought. Um, and it was quite cool because, you know, on the hot days, you know, where all the, yeah. all the town dwellers are going to be there, all the city slickers, um, <laughs> and you could, you know, you could dodge them, yeah. basically. Um, we used to sit and watch, you could see the domain from where we lived and everything going up. But no, we always go there. Don't always get a helicopter ride, though. I had, kids were told that was last year's surprise. Yeah, that's what's every team. $20 for the big bungee tram was a ripoff in itself, I saw. But in general... Wonderful place. Did they have the octopus this year? Uh, yeah. Oh, do, do you mean the Chiro plane? Yeah. Uh, same Chiro plane I rode on when I was seven. Yeah. How do you say? Same guy running it, too, I mate. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, really good. Um, A&P show, I'm glad they do that on a different weekend now because that, that's good. They go to both of them. So those clashes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, was that the Mosgiel, the Tyree A&P show? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was on the Saturday. Brian was on the Sunday. Mm. A question that a lot of our participants have worried about answering, yeah, it? and it's it's not that complicated, obviously. But you know, if you were able to share a space or an ocho hot chocolate or a lemon and pyro or whatever it might be, or West's cordial, thinking of Dunedin brands, they could be with us or they might have passed. Mm-hmm. But um, who would you like to sit down and have a bit of a chin wag with? Like a Dunedinite. The Dunedin hero. Yeah, Dunedin legend. Somebody that really screams at Dunedin for you. Most people won't have heard of this guy. Um, one of the reasons I decided to get into teaching is I was involved in a organisation called Edmund Rice Camps. Um, have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah, right. So this is camps for kids who need a break. Uh, they're still going. Massive shout out to Amelia Brusinello, who has uh, an awful lot to do with them. But there was a guy uh, who brought them to Dunedin, Brother Henry Shepard, who was, a, who was my science teacher at school, the most incredible, charismatic, hearing guy ever. And anyone who ever come across uh, Henry will remember him really, really fondly. I know of three people who have named kids after him because wow. he's that kind of guy. Um, he died, I can't remember how many years ago, more than 10 um, and if I could sit down and have a have a stout, I'd be having it with Henry Shepard. Yeah. Um, and I mention him not just because he's someone that, you know, um, inspired me growing up, but inspired a huge number of um, Danita Knights, not only through school and through the camps as we were leaders, but the kids had come up through that as well. Through really um, then. Oh, huge. Just when you come across someone who is that great but has no ego with it and would just give everything they've got to make someone else's life better, that's that's the kind of guy you aspire to be. It's beautiful. That is really awesome. What a great answer. Thank you. Hey, uh, let's say you've got the power to make a change or a difference here in Dunedin. Mm. Mm, This is the other tricky question. What's something that you would do that would you think would really help improve Dunedin or the lives of those that live there? Oh, how do I articulate this? It's not because obviously we're we're being we're in hypothetical land at the moment, um, so it's not something I can actually do. But if I could, I just make it so that people have a bit of a look around and realise how good it is here. Um, because a lot of the people you see, especially on social media talk so much about how much they hate the place. And in general, it's not just a Dunedin thing. If you really don't like the place you are, go somewhere else. Because there's a lot going on here that is really, really great. I think you'll find your feelings and thoughts will follow you <laughs> wherever you go, don't you? Well, that's exactly right. Yeah, good. So, like... I'm pretty sure it's the New Zealand song, isn't it? You don't know how lucky like, you we know, are. Like, 100%. And it's also the human condition. You know, you always want something better. You always look across to see how green the grass is on the other side and and all of that but it's not really my wish is not that they go somewhere else my wish is that they look around and go oh incredible we've got 
amazing walks. We've got great businesses. We've got um, just so much going on here. Incredible place for kids. Yeah. Um, it's not hard to look elsewhere and look further elsewhere, out of the country, to places that um, would would love to be have a tenth of what we've got. So that's that's my change to make. Let's cheer it up. Not too much power. Don't be able to do that, Dan. And it's a real easy way. Cheer up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. Well, as a final sort of mark, do you want to let the community know again how we can seek your support and services for insurance, maybe? And, and um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we're at Mortgage Link Otago. You can find us on Facebook or Google Mortgage Link. We also, the insurance side runs as Insurance Link Otago, but you'll find us either, either way. Um, just on Lower Stewart Street above Woof. Um, it's funny though, because we are on Lower Stewart Street on the upstairs there and on a Friday or even on a Tuesday, to be honest, you look out the window and there's just people enjoying themselves living that life. And you're like, oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, all I could, I seldom do. <laughs> I just shake my hand at them out the window. But no, so that's where we are. Come and see us. Um, always happy just to have a conversation. And to be honest, even if you want more than a conversation, sometimes that's where it goes because we'll give advice before we give products. Thanks, Tan. Really lovely to be here. L- letting me come along. I didn't need to be as nervous. No, I'm not in it. That's fair. No. Thanks for being so awesome. And Mother Movie, love having you here in Dunedin. And um, big shout out to Mortgage Link, Insurance Link, and, and yourself. Thank you. Thank you.